Hey everybody, how's it going? Josh back here with another mask rehaul. I am here with Sam. And this is a Tot 78 Michael Myers mask with the old Halloween 2 Elrod mask hair. That, that moppy hair um, that came on it, the big one piece. Um, but I had some laying around. I liked the way it looked on it, so I went ahead and put it on here. Um, This was a mask you might have seen in some other videos sitting around there. It had uh, a bluish tint. It was too gray for me. It kind of made me rem uh, think of Halloween 6, which wasn't what I was going for. So I completely stripped him down with the Dremel tool, um, at least from the front front side and everything like that. So he was completely stripped down of the original paint. And I went ahead and repainted him. Uh, I did all skin tone at first. Uh, I was going to leave some on the neck here. But then I realized, you know, I'm just going to go all white, all clean. And um, you can still kind of see some of it here. I only went over a few layers here, so it still gives you that look of uh, the wearage. Um, I went real light on some of the shading areas. Um, once again, all I do is use uh, charcoal. I think it turned out pretty well, especially with the hair. Um, the hair isn't styled the way I originally had it. Um, putting it up in the case there, he, um, you know, the hair gets pushed back and in, so, and this hair doesn't fall back normal, so some of the flares, I had some of them up and stuff like that, but, um, I think this turned out very well. My shading is getting a little bit better, blending in. Uh, a little dark on this side, a little heavy. I wanted maybe a little thinner line, but now the thing with charcoal is if you're using it, um, once it's on there, it's very hard to get off. Um, you can use water and it will just kind of rub it in. Uh, so it's very hard. And once again, all, after my shading, I always go over it with a, a very thin latex and it kind of gives it that supposed to be in their shadowy look. Let me see my So I'm very happy with how this turned out. I did not do the sideburns I was going to. Um, I forgot about it and just looking at it. Sitting in the case that it is what it is. That's why I like it. Um, I'm not sure how the camera's picking it up. It is a little darker than what I wanted it to. I think I went a little too heavy on the uh, a wash. I did try to wipe some of it off. Um, here is a comparison to my Sinister Studios 78 mask that I redid too as well. And there was no, uh, I did not do any weathering to this one at all. Um, of course this guy has the uh, brow definition this one does not at all it's just a flat forehead I try to add some shadowing to give it that effect I'm get side by sides here so these are so right now these are my two um, my two H1s that are going in the case. Um, struggled a little bit with this guy. I had him repainted at least three times already. Um, then I finally took me two Dremel tools. I bought a new I had one uh, before it just must overheated. I bought the same exact type again. Uh, it's a, the Hyper, Hyper Tough from Walmart. I used it for about 20 minutes and it stopped working on me. So then I didn't go and buy a, a, an actual Dremel. I had no issues with that at all. Um, so now when I do mass um, certain ones, I will be going ahead and taking off all those things. Um, so I just want to show you guys, um, if any of you mask collectors out there just, you know, are into them and stuff like that, and you get the old l rods or the old hospital masks that have this, um, I'm, I'm guessing it's factory added hair. Um, because now all the hair on the new masks, they call it uh, hand-laid. So I'm guessing this is 
probably laid on by a machine at first. Um, keep it because I, I still think with enough styling, this hair is pretty pretty nice. And especially during an H1, uh, maybe not as much flare back here. I did have to cut some around here. Uh, it does take some cutting and some, you know, but really it was very simple to put on me. 10-15 minutes. I uh, use some uh, crazy glue for the hairlines and underneath and then some spray adhesive and it just sits normally. Uh, it does come into uh, a couple sections. Uh, it will come in the front section. It's just about here. Um, there's a and then a back section which is split. It'll be split right around here. The whole, whole way down. And then there's a split somewhere around here. It kind of gives it flaps. And you kind of got to edge it up to the ear, right? And then you're going to have somewhere around here, here, and about here, you kind of have a, a, a fold in the hair. Um, but you can't, you can't tell. It's like taking a carpet and kind of folding it a little bit, and you have that little crease and fold. Um, but you can't tell that it's in there if you style it right. So I'm very, um, I wish I had better lighting. I wish I had a light where I can actually change it because um, I do have some nice pic pictures of this um, with different lighting, which really bring out the details, hides the one hides the, uh, the shadowing. The one thing about the shadowing is a lot of people say, you know, it's just the lighting, why people actually paint on the shadows. Well, most people were going to have this mask out in regular lighting all the time for display, and you're not going to have them shadows on it. So, you know, when people come over and look, you want that kind of shadow look to it all the time. So that's, that's probably the main reason people put some shadowing in there. It's just so when it's, we have normal lighting, you can at least have some of that shadow effect to it without actually having to do studio lighting or anything like that. Um, and that's why I do it. Um, I have nothing against this stock 78 mask. Um, depending on where I had it, time of day, you can see shadows, of course, because of different lighting. But um, try is that one. Uh, so, for, and I have a few videos upcoming uh, since it is a spooky season. Um, to trying to get into it. Um, I did have a very nice comment in one of my other videos, um, wondering why I only had three subscribers. I really don't post my my link out many places. Um, this is just for you know people that come across it or something like that. Um, I did have, I do have over a thousand views on one of my rehairing videos, which I did not expect at all. Um, and I just thought every video would get maybe thirty some likes, maybe less, uh, because I'm not doing a lot of advertising or anything like that. Um, this is just for you know um, me, myself, and friends that, that like to see what I'm doing. So. Uh, big thank you very much, and I did find out that my video helped a few people with their rehairing projects, so that means a lot to me. Um, some upcoming videos I got, um, I do have a, a cool idea with one of my masks, it's a couple cosplay videos, I, I think. Um, I, I have a nice idea with my H40 mask that I just, I touched up yesterday. Uh, I do did do a photo shop, or a photo shoot, I'm sorry, with my... My girlfriend and my niece, she's uh, going to be seven at the end of this week, she actually wore this um, Sam thing. It's not a complete PJ, it's more like a dress on her, but, um, and then a Sam mask. And I'm going to post uh, them pictures with the commentary behind them. So the next video will probably just be a bunch of pictures, um, but I will have, have commentary, uh, humorous commentary to the photos behind it. Um, so that's two videos I can think of offhand. Um, now then I am going trick or treating Saturday night. I'm thinking about getting a selfie stick. Uh, it's at our campground, so um, you know, just trying to get maybe some good, good clips of uh, you know my cosplay Michael Myers walking around the campsite, hiding behind trees and all that fun stuff like that. And then of course October 31st is the town. Um, so we'll see how the weather is and everything like that. If it's, I'm hoping for nice weather so I know I can have my phone out. I can wear the masks I want to. Um, right now I have my H40 mask, which is going to be 
um, for Saturday. I've uh, got my coveralls already, so I'm um, looking forward to uh, Saturday night. And and finally, this will be my first actual year dressing up as Mike Myers. Last year I did, uh, and it was just uh, one of them cheap little Rob Zombie masks. I uh, bought it at Spirit Halloween, and I used some of them uh, oil pastels, them little like oil pastel crayons to add some features and colors. I uh, thought it looked cool at the time, and uh, like any beginner would think. So this year I'm really excited that uh, you know I finally got a real mask, and I will show you that mask actually. I think I just put it in the last video too, so I, I probably show this on mask a lot. But I did go ahead and add some features to it. Um, so this is the mask I will be wearing. I might even wear it for Halloween night. I was thinking about the uh, the one day, the one day mask. But um, so what? Yep, I can already see it already. So this mask um, from the last video, I actually went ahead and redid some. I took some white uh, and uh, dry brushed some of this area. This is showing up more on camera. Um, I started noticing the pictures, certain things that I didn't like, um, speci specifically right here, because I put a wash over all these areas and certain lighting and camera effects. It, this looks like just one big um, brown section. There's no split in between it. Um, same as over here. So I did go ahead and lighten up some areas. Um, and then I started taking a lot of pictures and I realized that I did so many thin fine lines all the same color black that in pictures even far back even when I go too far back like even if I was close up this would all just kind of blend in and just kind of be like I don't know, like a big shadow so what I did go ahead and do is I took a toothpick and I just went over some of the defined lines. So there's about three or four lines right in here. But I only went over two of them. Same as up here. It always looked like I had a crisscross pattern in my pictures. So I did not touch any of these lines coming down here except for the main one. Same with up here. Um, you might be able to see a lot of the work inside the deep, deep lines. So I just really went over and touched up some of the main feature lines um, so the other ones kind of look like they're just wrinkling um, and that's something I, I would say to anybody that's rehauling a mask um, I've had this mask done and completed uh, for months now I think it's back in maybe March um, maybe even April I finished him and I'm still adding little things to it so don't be afraid to do it. Um, you know, if you think you're going to mess it up, you might not want to touch them. Um, this guy, he was already sealed, so, you know, you can put acrylic paint over the sealer and wipe it right off if you don't like it, and it won't affect anything you've done before. So, um, the hodgepodge spray sealer, I recommend it. When you think you're done, spray it on there. Um, if you have a nice base layer of color, especially on an H40. If, if you have a nice base layer of color that you really love and you're worried about messing it up, doing all these little, little fine lines, just put some sealer over it, let it dry, and then you do the lines and wipe off and it won't mess up your base at all. Um, so, so yeah, this is a... Uh, I just noticed he has a little hole in his mouth and I forget if I even... if I tried to close that at one time or if I just always left it there. It's something that I kind of ripped open. Well, anyways, so yeah, this will be my mask for at least Saturday night. And then I will go ahead and decide for uh, Halloween night what I'm going to wear. Oh, and I also cut the neckline. And I want it down below with some brown. Um, so just little things. I think I cut necklines on almost all my masks because, you know, I hate having necklines down here and you can't move without them hitting your shoulders or anything like that. So I did go ahead and cut this uh, for better mobility, better 
head tiltage, which I'm hoping to do to uh, a bunch of children Saturday night that don't know. We are new at this campsite. We've only been there a few times um, this year since we moved to camper up there, so nobody really knows me or anybody in my family that well. So I'm just basically a random, to a point, a random guy going in dressing like Michael Myers walking around a campsite for trick-or-treating. So it should be pretty interesting. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for my updated videos coming up here. I'm going to try to get another one done today. Um, thank you very much um, for comments and likes I get. I get them here. I get them on Facebook, some on Instagram. They mean the world to me. And they make me, uh, you know, them times where you're sitting there, uh, I, I sit here at work all the time, and I, you know, I'm thinking out my financials and all my bills and stuff, and I'm looking back, I'm like, was this really worth it? The, all the stuff that I get, have, and, um, and then you know, seeing you guys comments and posts, and that's that's what it's about. Um, collecting really, I I like showing off my stuff, um, and, and it makes me feel good that you know other people enjoy seeing it as well. Uh, and that's why I do it. So I want to thank you guys very much. Stay tuned for my two other videos coming up soon. Um, I will try to get the picture one. Just, you have to see my niece dresses up as Sam, um, trying to get candy off my girlfriend. So, and it's very cute and adorable. Um, she did a hell of a job. I was very worried about her going and uh, not wanting to wear the mask or the suit once I got it off, off this guy. Um, but she was a trooper, and we had fun with it. So thank you guys, and hope you have a great day.